Whoa. <laughs> this thing's radioactive. <laughs> we got some Scylla Flash. We got some Flashaboo. We got some Bucktail Deer Hair. So it's it is it's a it's non-vegan. Gem with the ridges. Ridged for her pleasure, meaning the big fat bass. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today we're gonna have some fun unboxing a mystery package supposedly sent from a manufacturer, forwarded along to Josh over at JH, and then sent to me. So the company apparently reached out to Josh. Josh accepted the package on his behalf. It's meant for me. The reason why I'm going about it this way, because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be able to put this on the internet, because I have a feeling Josh may be trolling me with something funny inside. I could be completely wrong. I, I, I don't know. I, my, my suspicions are peaked. And uh, if you're wondering why there's so many knives on top of this box, uh, I'm doing a review on every single uh, keychain knife that you can buy on Amazon that's under 20 bucks. And uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and crack the box. And this is the Kershaw which I love. I absolutely love this knife. Every, so, so many of these things are just outright danger, dangerous. So I just figured I'd put that up there as something silly and fun. Too bad we didn't cut the entire box open. Oh, okay. 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 This looks like something from a band of anglers. Rich Low sales from Northeast. Hi, Rich. Thank you very much. And we got some stuff, bouncing bucktail. I just want to see if there's anything. Okay, this looks like a sell sheet kind of deal. Uh, maybe. Describing some of their lures. Patrick Sabeel, he's a, a tinker like myself. And we have some of the Dart Spin Pros. Sweet. We love these at the show. This is the, uh, this is probably, uh, this package as a whole is probably a result of the video I put out where, uh, I try to break the lure. Like, I, I don't know if it was mentioned or not, but I was pulling hard. Like, that dude had it ripped around or wrapped around his fingers. He stretched it out wide. I grabbed the middle and pulled. I pulled him off balance. He legitimately was humping my leg. I'm not even uh, kidding you. He really, <laughs> you know, I, I pulled him off balance. I really did. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Ocean born. Looks like a pencil popper of sorts. Come on. Have these open. I'm not familiar with their stuff, guys. I really am. I'm not. And honestly, you guys are getting a better view of what's in the box. I can't even see it. Let's see what we got here. So it is there. Yo, that's funny. So the first ever lure that I turned on a lathe, JMC Fishing, if you see this video, I turned a popper that looked like a rainbow trout, and I turned a pencil popper that had ridges in it. That was... That was at your parents' old house in Sayreville, bro. So that's got to be 10 years ago, at least. And, uh, yeah, it had these kind of ridges. I think these are for aerodynamics and and to uh, add a little bit more to the surface uh, commotion when it's thrashing about. That, at least that's what I was doing it for. Uh, interesting. Looks like they're using VMC Forex and some massive honking rings. I dig it. I dig it. The OB flying pencil. We like pencil poppers. We really do. Oh, ho, 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 ho. all right. Now, I'll explain to you why I'm excited. All right. The reason why I'm excited is I have sitting in the back of my car right now um, the Super Strike Little Neck Sinking Popper. This is the Flying Popper 140 SK in bunker. I'm assuming SK means sink. And I have the Daiwa Mibachi popper, which is essentially a clone. They're in the back of my car right now, and I'm looking at this thing from a side profile. It still has that same ridging as a pencil. It has the wings for stability. Same exact profile. Like, 
the angle of the cupped head, the taper of the neck, it looks nearly identical to the Super Strike, and it looks nearly identical to the Mabachi. The Mabachi has like some ridging around the top, almost like a crosshair. I don't know if there is a patent or some licensing that ran out, but man, oh man, there are companies coming after them. This is, I think this has been out for a little while, maybe a little over a year. Strong hooks. Very strong, very stout rings. I dig it. Nice pattern too. Now, what we'll find out, all three of them combined, um, we'll be seeing if they swim, just like how the uh, Super Strike Little Neck Sinking Popper swims, which is one of the best lures ever made for striped bass and bluefish. Ooh, cool. A translucent blank. So I guess they want me to cut it in half? <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Um, I'm going to be cutting the Super Strike and the Mibachi in half. I, I guess I'll be cutting this bad boy in half. I, is there anything else in here that's cut in halfable? Uh, what is, what is this? What is this thing? That's a big honking hook. That's a pretty strong hook. Okay. Again with the ridges. Ridged for her pleasure, meaning the big fat bass. Got another pre rig dart spin. Yeah, these guys hooked it up. The band of fishermen, huh? That's a sweet bait. Now what's this pocket up here for? This stuff, the Z-Man stuff stretches, it's very elastic. This stuff has, it, it's, it seems like it's rugged, I guess is the best way to put it. This, this will be throwing probably tomorrow. We got another pencil. Assuming it's the same size, is it the same size? Four ounce, this, doesn't, this one here doesn't feel like it's a four ounce. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that, this is definitely heavier. Okay. Now, I understand the rig. I think. I suspect long range bluefish. At the same time, I've all, I'm have i looking at the size of the swivel here. I've also rigged uh, plugs like this, similar in style to this. Uh, no belly hanger. I would hang an assist hook up on the front. I would hang a Mongo uh, inline single like a 9 -0. Use it for tuna. This looks like it's a 4X, maybe like a 5060 VMC. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Might be the, is it a 60? I don't know offhand. Um, and use it for tuna. So I don't know if I would use this hook for tuna. It is. A, it's a pretty strong hook though. I mean. That'll handle a you know seventy five hundred pound bluefin, but uh, for bluefish, whip this thing out there one hundred and twenty five yards without batting an eye, and just just keep it on the surface, bring it back to you. Four ounces feels heavy. This thing definitely ha has to be a sinker. There's no way this is floating. This might be something you could throw in the canal. Use it almost like a jig. I'm not sure how. I mean, I guess if you snap it up, it'll kind of kick back, plane down, because this is going to try to keep some, all right, you know, there's got to be some sort of st stability through the water, water column. It's going to stay like this, kind of shoot down. I don't know. Interesting. We're going to fish it. Another one of these. Oh, this. oh, 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 okay. I think I understand what happened with that. That was in here, and they rigged it on this jig. And I love bucktailing. And what is going on here? We got some Scylla Flash. We got some Flashaboo. We got some Bucktail Deer Hair. So it's it is it's a it's non-vegan. Okay, so these. Okay, I see how they got the, the hooks for the hook slots and clearances. I guess I assume I don't know. That's sweet. 
That's sweet. And we got... Now that's pretty cool. We got a full translucent. I saw this on their uh, on their spec sheet. The full translucent. And I wasn't sure how clear it was. You know, it's funny, I opened this box upside down. I probably should have opened it up this side first to show you the clear because it kind of gives you an idea what's going on with the construction of these baits a little more clearly. But yeah. Sweet bait. I'll be throwing this probably tomorrow. We got some uh, mackerel popper and we got one more. Five and a half inch, 144 ounce. This is a heavy one. Got to be careful getting this out of the package. We don't want it to uh, get any momentum and have these hooks and pale. Wow, this is heavy. Yeah, this, this is a four ounce all right, no doubt. Maybe, maybe even a little heavier, heavier. And these look like they could be ST76s. Yeah, these are strong. Big honking rings. We know what this is for. Uh, when you're popping pelagics, we're talking big fish, not striped bass, that when they come up behind a um, any top water surface slide or anything, they move the water. They displace uh, the water on the water surface. If it's too light, the displacement will move the lure and they'll just straight up miss it. I've seen it happen. It's happened to me tons of times before. Uh, this seems to, I mean, guess be a design being that it's super heavy to kind of stay planted and rip, 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 get this thing really moving on the surface, chugging it fast, you know, rip it out there like you would a surface iron because it's super heavy like some of the surface irons that are out on the market and uh see if you can't get this thing skipping on the surface back to you or at least chug it and just rip it and uh it's it's beefy as hell i mean these are some super heavy duty treble hooks and the rings are definitely tuna grade I don't know what brand or make swivels they are. I'm assuming they're stout enough. And it's three-wired with the tail wrap like we've seen on some of them, or most of them. Uh, although some of the tail wraps, I noticed there's a little gap. I'm not sure what that's about here. See that right there? All in all, you know, nice build. You know, you know very sturdy-feeling plastic. Might be polycarbonate. <laughs> And then we have, the, I guess this is their glow color. And we're going to go ahead and kill the lights if we can. Whoa. <laughs> this thing's radioactive. Give you an idea how it stretches and elongates. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> all right, so I guess it's with all that being said, uh, I was wrong. Josh wasn't going to troll me and put something inappropriate in the box. <laughs> I fully suspect that he was. So we got all the goods here. Which I am very thankful for, guys over at uh, Abandoned Fisherman. Uh, I greatly appreciate the generosity. Uh, I take it you guys enjoyed the video uh, that I had put out. <laughs> uh, that was pretty fun. So a Rich Lowe from a band of anglers. I greatly appreciate it. Many, many thanks. And I do look forward to putting uh, some of these to uh, work. Definitely look. Definitely going to be throwing this guy here. Definitely going to be throwing this one. Although I might take off the treble hooks if the bluefish show up. Uh, the bucktails. I, I definitely know. I have a couple spots where I'm going to be throwing them. And these guys here on the flats. I know. Uh, I got some smallmouth uh, 
dreams with these guys here as well in the rivers. Guys, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, until next time, guys, whoever showed up and checked this out, I greatly appreciate every second of every minute you guys spend here without you. I would have no reason to even exist. I wouldn't even have an audience. And the guys over at A Band of Anglers wouldn't even know who I was or even want to send me stuff to put out to my audience and, and show off. And I understand that it's a form of marketing. I get that. I'm, you know, these guys are sending me stuff and I'm putting it out there. Um, hey. I got to admit, though, freebies or not, interesting stuff, really nice plugage. And uh, for you guys, still here, what color should I paint this? What pattern should I paint this? I probably won't be the one painting it. <laughs> I'll probably give it to my friend Sudsy and uh, have him paint it for me in the colors that you choose. So it's with all that being said, until next time, guys, tight lines, and I'll see you soon.